Welcome back to Sam Codes. It's your boy Sam. Hope you all are doing great. I know it's been a while. Had a lot of work, so busy, and yeah, with the festive periods and everything. But I'm really, really excited about this new year and the content that I'll be uploading on this channel. For sure, it's gonna be more frequent, better. We're gonna add some more production to the production to the tutorials to really make it better and actually create a variety for everyone. But yeah, we're continuing the Google Map API because for me, that's just something I really love doing. I like the difference, the changing, how to customize it and all that. So that's what we're doing today. Hope you all are doing great. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. You can check out so many videos that I have on this channel, the playlist, everything. Check them out. We make programming and programming content, Python, JavaScript, whatever programming language. Sometimes we focus more on maps, but still, it's really, really more about the broader picture of programming and understanding these principles, especially the basic ones before you start using like frameworks. So yeah, guys, as you can see right here, this is what we'll be creating today. So what we're doing here is that basically we created this radio buttons where when we click on one of them or driving transit and we put the origin and the destination location, it should show us how to get there through transit, through walking, through driving. Now, this is the continuation of the series. Uh, but you can notice that we changing little things and these little things are what I call customization, meaning that you're actually customizing your map the way you want it to be for different purposes or for your business. So yeah, guys, that's what we'll be doing today. I'll show you everything from HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And yeah, so before we get started, I'm just going to point it out. If you don't know how to get your API key, I really can't help you because I think I've helped enough. There's so many videos I have on this channel about how to get your API key, how to do your billing account, everything. So make sure you do that because if you don't do that, your map is not going to look like mine. If you're lucky, you might be able to get your map working, but it will just have that watermark that says for development purposes. So make sure that you have that all done. Yeah, guys. So the first thing you need to do is you need to use your code editor. In this case, I'll be using Visual Studio Code. You could use whatever you want. You could use Atom. You could also use, um, there's so many IntelliJ, whatever one you want to use. Now, what we'll do first is we'll open a folder. And before we open this folder, we need to create a folder. So in my desktop right here, I'm going to click on new folder. I'm going to call this folder Google API. You can call it whatever. I don't just want to think too much about the name. Now we have Google API. I'm going to click on it and select the folder. And what you'll see is that you see the folder appear basically. So now we're inside the folder with Visual Studio Code. We'll be able to use this as our directory. And yeah, so what we need to do is we need to create next our HTML file. So we say index.html. After that, I'm going to create my CSS file. Call it style.css. The next thing, I'm going to create my JavaScript file. I'm going to call this file app.js. And now we have our three files. These are the three things we're going to use to create this Google Map project. We'll have our index.html file for the basic structure of the website. Then we have our CSS for the styling, basically just creating a place where we can put our map. And then we'll have the JavaScript, which is just mainly about the whole settings and making everything work together. So yeah, guys, that's basically it. And now let's get to the coding part. So what I will do is I'm going to cancel the CSS file. Make sure it's saved. Cancel the app.js. So now we only have our index.html file because that's what all we need right now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just do this to get our Emmet abbreviation. So we get a basic structure of our HTML should look like. And after this, we need a title. So the title I'm going to give it is autocomplete and directory, just Google map, whatever. The title depends on whatever you want to be shown because that's what we're going to be using for this project. Now that we're done with that, I want to actually connect our HTML to our CSS and HTML to JavaScript, just so we have that done and not have to do that again. So we do the script source and the source is the app.js. The next part is to join the CSS. So the way we do the CSS is you just click on link. You can see CSS already. It's called style.css. 
I think it's already connected, but just to make sure I'll do this, what do we want to do next? Well, what I would like us to do next is that I think we should start working on the body because we're done with the head right now. So for the body, what do we want? We want a basic div tag because I don't want this video to be too long. So yeah, let's step up some of the stuff. We'll give it a style. We'll call it, we'll just say the display is none for now. Now inside this div, what we want to do is we'll put an input. The input type is going to be a text. And these are the first input for the origin and the destination, of course. And for this input, we want it to have some other characteristics, like we're given an ID, because we want to be able to use this ID in our JavaScript. After this, we'll also give it a class. And the class is, I want it to be called control or controls. You can give it whatever as far as you remember. And last but not the least, I want it to have a placeholder because I really like placeholders. I just feel they make the your inputs look better and just help the people who are actually writing into your inputs to really know what you want them to write. So placeholders are definitely a must for me, but depending on your project and how you want it to be, you can do it the way you want it to be. That's basically why I'm telling you all the f little things I'm doing here is because I want you to understand that at the end, this is your project. And yeah, guys, it's been a while I made videos, so this video is going to be for sure rusty, but it's just about being more consistent with it. What I will do is I'll copy practically almost the same thing for the second input, because the only difference is that this is going to have destination location instead of origin and what else is it going to have um id i'm going to change it instead of origin id to be destination input i'm sorry for the dog barking um, neighbors dogs they always i don't know maybe they're hungry now it's time to actually create because you can see in the presentation we had altogether five inputs the first two inputs were number one you can see that the type were text, meaning that you had to basically write your destination and your origin. The other three inputs were the transit was also the cycling or the driving. So the difference with this is that these inputs are radio buttons. So that's the next thing. We're going to have a div that's going to contain all this. This div, I'm going to give it an ID of I'll just say mode selector because that's basically what it's going to do. And after that, we'll give it also a class and the class is going to be controls. Now inside this div, I'm going to put an input. You see that text is going to have to leave there because this is not a text input. This is a radio. And also we're going to give it a name. This name, I'm just going to put type in there. After I'm also going to give it an ID, change mode walking, basically, because this is what is going to change that mode from wherever it was to walking mode. And we'll have similar for transit and yeah, also for driving, because that's one good thing about programming sometimes is when you're doing stuff like this, that they're quite similar. Basically, they have some really basic inheritance. So this way, we're just going to copy and paste to make it way more easier. And then we say checked, set that equal to checked, because when you click on it, that's you basically checking it. After this, we want to give them a label. And for the label right here, we're going to give it for this for, we'll say it's for this right here. Now, what we're going to do is that all these are going to be in the same div. So this way, I'm just going to copy this and we'll change all the minute stuff like, oh, the radio is going to be the same name is going to be type. The ID is not going to be this. So the ID is going to be change mode driving. So now we're done with this div. All we need to do now is actually create the div that holds the map itself. So we'll create a div, we're given an ID of map just to simplify things. And it's going to just be like this. So this is basically all we need for yes, the HTML apart from this really important thing, which is 
our API key. So when you put the script here, you need to put a source. The source that I'm going to use is I'm using my Google API, my API key. You'll be able to download the link below this video, but the link will not contain the API key itself. I'm going to leave a card above. You click on that card. It's going to take you to a video where I show you exactly step by step how you get an API key. When you watch that video and I have actually gotten your API key, all you need to do is paste your API key where it says your API key. And I put that all in capital so you know that you replace that part with the API key. When you do it, your API key should look something similar to what I have right here. After that, we'll put a sync also here because we're using the callbacks and all that. We need to add that sync keyword to it. So this is basically for HTML. Make sure you save your file, control S. Now we're done with the HTML part. The next part is the CSS really basic. And then we'll delve into the whole functionality with JavaScript. So yeah, I'll see you on the next one, guys. Let's get to it.